Hi. Here we are. Here we are. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you just came out and announced that your show is ending. Well, next year. Well, next yes, year. Yes. It's not ending right now, but yes. <laughs> How did it feel in that moment? To say it today? Yes. Uh, you know, emotional. It was, it was the first time it really... I mean, I told my staff and my crew, and that was emotional. But, and I, I'm glad that before it leaked, I, I got to tell my staff and my crew from my own words that they didn't hear it anyplace else. Um, and that was, that was emotional because um, I haven't been sleeping. I've been trying to, you know, anticipate how to tell them and, you know, hope that everybody would take it okay. A lot of people were very emotional, and I got emotional. So that was, uh, that was that first step. And then today was the first time telling, you know, everybody else. So it was, it was uh, I didn't think I'd be emotional because I really am prepared for this. I've really given it a lot of thought, but emotional. I could see it in your eyes. Yeah. What was the emotion? Was it relief, joy, sadness? Uh, it's, it's everything. I mean, you know, I think, what I, I think I got choked up on saying that this has been a, the best experience of my life. I think that's when I got choked up, and it, it, because it has been, you know. I mean, I don't intend on retiring. I, I want to do other things, but if, if I never do another thing in my life, this has been the, the thing I'm most proud of, you know, to do something for 19 years, especially something that nobody thought would happen, you know, or give a chance you know I had to fight really hard to get this um, this show so um, you know it's just it's, it's something I'm really proud of something I'm really um, emotional about because I probably don't even know how I'm gonna feel on that last day yeah. I was thinking about this journey and 19 years ago you having to fight to get this show and prove that you could be a talk show host could you ever have imagined it going this long and going this well? No, except the, uh, this woman I, I talked to before I got the show told me that when I was 45, I was going to start a new career that would go 20 years if I wanted it to. And I was like, you know. Who she, told you that? This astrologer, this woman. Wow. And she said, and it was when I couldn't work. It was like when nobody was hiring me after mm. I came out. And she said, you're going to start a whole new career when you're 45 and you can go 20 years if you want it to. And I was like, first of all, what woman starts over in Hollywood at 45 mm. and what sitcom goes 20 years? I didn't even think of a talk show. So she believed it. She knew it. And it, it actually, I started the show when I was 45. Um, Do you still have her number? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you her number. She's, she's amazing. What does she say is happening next for you? Uh, I didn't ask her. I, not yet. I mean, this is all just happening. You know? <laughs> okay, well, you need to call her. Yeah, for sure. Was it a hard decision to make? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, first of all, I, I have been struggling with it for a while. I really did think I was going to stop season 16. And um, because it was a... Um, if you can remember, there was a different president, and it was a, a different time, and there was a lot of uh, just just hatred and anger and, and uh, stuff that I was just like, this is a... And then my brother was like, you bring so much joy to people. If you stop, you know, th then all that darkness wins. You're the light. Like, stay and, and help people be kinder and be more compassionate. And so... I thought I was going to sign for one more year. They wanted me to sign for four more years, and we kind of, you know, split the difference. Not really. Three years. It's closer <laughs> to their terms. But, so, uh, but I knew that was, I knew the three years was going to be it. And, and then everybody's, well, like, just, you know, I think even last year, people were like, just go to 20. Like, why don't you just stop at 20? 19 like, is weird. Ni it's, it's not weird. 19 is good. 19 it's not is a round number. Well, who cares about a round number? Like, one is the beginning, nine is the end. So it's a beginning of a new chapter for me and the end of this chapter. So 19 is actually better than 20. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, 2020 was not good to anybody. So 20, <laughs> 20 is not a good number. <laughs> good point. Yeah. Are you glad you stayed? Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad I stayed. I, I mean, I, I just... And, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm sure if I would sign on to do, you know, more years, I would be glad if you talked to me then. Like, I love this show. I love these people that I work with. I, you know, we all have, I laugh every single day. I mean, this is not, this is not really a hard job, but it is 170 shows a year, and it's every single day, and it's just, you know, you know, and, you know, and I don't, I, you wake up at, 4.30 in the morning. I don't, I don't know how you do it. You Four, know. but who's counting? Four. 
I don't know how you do that. Well, you say it's not a hard job, but it is a hard job. Many, many talented and famous people have tried to do this job and not succeeded. Yeah. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. Um, <laughs> I just did, I wanted you to say it. I'm, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, because I'm kind of made for this. I'm a comedian, and, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm quick on my feet, and, and, uh, and I know how to pay attention, and yet, you know, um, come up with a joke or not come up with a joke if it's not the right time. And I, I know how to listen to people, and um, I know what it's like as a comedian to, to uh, read the room, you know? So I know how to read a guest and I can multitask, I can pay attention to a time that's, that's counting down on, on the camera while I'm talking to somebody. And it, you know, the multitasking comes in real handy. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what's happened. There is an elephant in the room and there will be people who think, oh, Ellen's leaving now because of everything that went on last year. I don't have to remind you there was an allegation of a toxic workplace. You had to get rid of three top managers here. People went after you personally. Did that have anything to do with this decision? Well, it's certainly, if, if it was why I was quitting, I would have not come back this year because everything happened, what you're talking about is last summer. And, and honestly, I really did think about not coming back because it, it did, um, you know, I mean, it was devastating. It was it because it started with me. It started with attacks on me, and attacking everything that I stand for and believe in and built my career around. Like I just, I am a kind person. I am a person who likes to make people happy. I am a people pleaser. You know, this is who I am. And so when I started hearing, you know, reading ridiculous things. And then it just kept going and going and going and going. And then I, I, it was during the summer, so I didn't have any platform to respond to it. It, um, you know, I, I just kept saying to, to Portia, I was like, if, if I was a fan of somebody and even if I loved them and, and, but I kept seeing something go on this long, I would think there must be some truth to it because it's not stopping. So it, that made me think I'm just like, someone's trying to, really hurt me and then right on the heels of that I hear in the I read in the press that there's a toxic work environment which I mean I had no idea never saw anything that would even point to that there was an investigation and found out there were some things that happened that were not okay and uh, we took care of that um, but it was horrible timing because it was just it was me then it was the show and then it was like a a, a thing that just felt like, I, why do I want to go back, you know, when someone clearly, it felt, it felt personal. It felt like somebody really did not want the show to come back. And I thought, well, if I don't come back, they win, and I'm not going to let them win. Did you feel like you were being canceled? I felt like somebody had some, you know, I, I mean, I really didn't understand it. I still don't understand it. Um, yeah, I thought I thought something was going on that that because it was too orchestrated, it was too coordinated, and you know people get picked on, but for four months straight for me, and then for you know for me to read in the press about a toxic work environment when when all I've ever heard from every guest that comes on the show is ha what a happy atmosphere this is and how what a happy place it is, mm -hmm. and uh, you know so. Well, like, let me push you on that a little bit because you know there are probably people who are thinking, how could you not know? And if you didn't know, should you have known? I, I don't know how I could have known when there's 255 employees here. And there are a lot of different buildings and a lot of different, um, you know, uh, there's, there are different areas. And, and I delegate. There are p bosses to each different area. I am, it is my name on the show, so clearly it affects me. And I have to be the one to stand up and say, this can't be tolerated. We need to make changes. How can we, what, what can I do? Um, and, you know, I just, unless I literally, you know, stayed here, you know, until the last person goes home at night and, and checked in with 255 people. But I do wish somebody would have come to me and said, hey, something's going on that you should know about. But there's no way that I, I you know, I wish I, I wish I knew. And, um, 
And of course people are thinking that I should know, but it's not, there are not, you know, 50 people here. There are 255 people here. And I, I just, um, I had no idea. You said in your opening monologue this season that you made a joke. You said, if you're starting a talk show, don't make be kind your mantra. Don't make it your motto. Yeah. But do you, seriously, do you kind of regret that or? Yeah. You do? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I think I came from a, my intention was to, you know, to spread a message of like, let's be kind to one another because, and I started it because at the time there were a lot of uh, young gay, you know, young boys being either, you know, killed or bullied into suicide because they were gay. And it was, uh, it was happening a lot. And that's why I started saying, be kind to one another. And so that was easy, you know, when this happened. It was fine, like, for 17 years. And then suddenly someone was like, hey, you know what would be good clickbait is if the be kind lady isn't kind. What if we, what if we, and it was so easy to, you know, to use that. And, you know, I don't know if, if every single day I'm smiling and dancing. I know that, you know, if I am having a day where I'm walking around and I don't feel happy or if I'm looking down and I don't look someone in the eye, does that mean I'm not kind? Or does it mean I'm a human being that has emotions and I'm thinking about something? You know, so, you know, it's... It, you know, I joked about it in my stand-up special, that it's a ridiculous title to have. You know, you can't, I can't honk my horn or else, you know, the be kind lady honked at me. Like, I can't, you can't do anything with that. It's just, I, it wasn't supposed to be my title. It was just a message. What would your motto be now if you could go back? <laughs> yourselves. <laughs> I knew it would be something good. <laughs> um, I don't know. My motto is, you know, still, you know, I, it's still be kind. I just don't, you know, I just don't want that to be my label. Sometimes I think people think that those in the public eye are almost bulletproof and these kinds of attacks don't hurt them. Mm -hmm. Like you don't feel it after all these years. Yeah. Is or, that true? Or that you're rich and so what are your problems? What do you have to complain about? You have money and it's like we are, we are, you know, no, I'm not bulletproof and no, I don't have a thick, thick skin. I mean, I'm, I'm extremely sensitive and I'm, you know, to the point of it's, it's, you know, not healthy how sensitive I am, but it's mainly like it's about other people. I think about how other people feel all the time mm -hmm. and how animals feel. And, you know, I'm constantly, you know, uh, empathetic towards everything. And so when, when something is coming back at me that I know is not true, um, I guess I could take one or two of those shots, mm. but four months in a row took a toll on me. You have already gone through, I mean, you went through a period in your career where you lost everything. Was there a moment during this that you thought, it's happening again? <laughs> yeah. My therapist reminded me of it. My therapist is like, you know, very few people go through such huge public humiliation twice in a lifetime. Isn't the therapist supposed to help you? Yeah, well, she's, she's like making me aware that I am, you know, supposed to experience this for a bigger reason and that I am, you know, a teacher. So, and, and how can I teach people if I retreat? How can I be an example of strength and perseverance and power if I give up and run away? And so... It really is one of the reasons I came back. I worked really hard on myself after all this was happening because also during that time we were robbed while we were in the house. We lost four animals. It, you know, it was, it was a bad time. And, it was, and, and so, yeah, I, uh, I just realized that... And also, you know, it, it, I, ha I have to say, if, if nobody else is saying it, it was really interesting because I'm a woman. And it did feel very misogynistic. Mm. It felt like I am a boss. I have a very successful show. I'd never had any complaints about anything for 17 years. And all of a sudden, all at once, something happened. So it did feel, um, yeah, it was... Sexist? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't know. It did feel weird. Mm. You've 
talked sometimes about, um, in the past we've talked about struggling with anxiety and depression. Doing a talk show requires you to be on, to turn it on every day to 150 watts. Yeah. Is that hard sometimes and some days? It's really hard, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, and when I come out here, it's not like I have to uh, fake it because especially when the audience was here, it, you know, that that's an energy exchange that's really um, important. And, I, and, and people have traveled and made plans and waited for a year for tickets. And so when I walk out, I'm, you know, I want them to have an experience that they are expecting. And so for that one hour, and if we do two shows, two hours, I'm able to do that because I'm a performer and that's, that's, um, it's easy for me to turn that on. Um, what's not easy is for me to turn it on when I feel sad inside mm -hmm. and I don't have to make anybody else happy and I just have to make me happy. Mm -hmm. That's the depression. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm in myself and I'm, but it's easy for me, for me to make other people happy. It's just tougher when I'm in a situation where I'm down and when people say, yeah, but you make so many people happy and it's like yeah i'm good at that yeah. like i'm not good when i'm going through a you know bout of depression or anxiety or whatever but yeah i can i can do this this is easy mm -hmm. but i think most performers who struggle with you know it's like this is you know this is who i am but like i said i also have other emotions well they always say it about comedians that yeah. there's that you find the laughter and Sadness is kind of the oldest cliche. Well, you you know, you start from there's there's got to be some kind of hurt, you know, inside. Not everybody, but for me, that, that I, you know, tried to fit in. Like I moved, you know, I started new schools every year and a half. I was constantly going to a new district, new school, new. So I was constantly having to fit in. So I just tried to, I guess, use humor to um, mask the feeling of I don't fit in. You talked a lot about being on a journey and that you did work on yourself, that you looked at yourself. Mm -hmm. And did you see anything that you wanted to change? Um, well, you know, I, I feel like I know that I'm, I'm I, I move faster than most people move, so I'm impatient. And so one thing that I learned during, you know, this time is that um, I'm someone who you can always count on being early, if not, you know, just early, real early. <laughs> and so I was always saying, let's start the show if everybody's here. And, and I learned through this process that some people weren't ready, which, you know, I wish somebody would have, again, told me like, hey, but instead everybody was like, okay, let's start the show. And, you know, so I learned that I need to just let people start the show when we're ready. So I'm just always like, if we're ready, let's go. So. That's, I learned that. I learned that um, I, I want people, I just somehow I, you know, we grew so big so fast that there were a lot of people who worked here that I never got a chance to meet or to walk in and say hello to or to check in just to even, and maybe had I done that, maybe had I gone to the different departments and said, hey, you know, just want to remind you, always talk to me if you need to or, you know, I wish I would have done that. Well, you do have 600 jobs, as far as I can tell. Yeah, well, <laughs> I need to do that 600 times. <laughs> um, last question on this topic. The, the ratings are down for this show. They're down for every talk show, Right. to be fair. Yep. But more for this one. Mm -hmm. Does that factor into any of this decision? It's, it's more for this one because we had fall, you know, further to fall. Um, and everybody else was at a lower you know, place, so they didn't have as far to fall to be honest i mean that's the truth we are we were very very successful as you said everything in television is down it's got nothing to do with why i'm leaving um you know if i was having fun i would i would do this show you know with nobody watching um so it's got nothing to do with that and i really truly believe that that next year is going to be an amazing year but that being said if if the ratings don't change from what I, you know i have a fan base that i know you know, loves me and, and supports me. And, and we have a digital platform that, you know, most people are now watching and getting clips, you know, on EllenTube and on our digital channels. So if that's the way people are watching it, then that's okay too. You had Oprah on your show. 
Is she kind, is she going to be your guru for talk show Afterlife? What does she say? Um, I wish she was my guru for after. I mean, I, you know, wish I had the money that she. You know, I should have <laughs> should have stayed a little bit longer to get that money. Um, you know, she's just she's just my you know my wise friend who is is more about like just sitting still and she's just advising me to sit still for a little while and not do anything just just not make a decision and not take another job right away sit still and don't do anything that doesn't sound like you no i'll probably buy a house or two i'll probably <laughs> i'll design a house so you know i mean design is like my passion too so i don't know sit still is not really sitting it's just not doing 170 shows a year yeah um you're not retiring no you still have 600 jobs I have I have a lot of jobs yeah is there something you want to do in this next chapter like something that's sort of in the back of your mind um, I don't know I, I've said that if, if there was a really good movie role that came up you know I've never had enough time to do that because I haven't had a summer right and I work you know all year long so if there was a really if it was worth my, because I'm also, again, impatient, so to sit in a trailer and wait for them to light something and turn around, and so it would have to be a really good role, but I would, I would do a movie. I could see you behind Steven Spielberg being like, chop, chop, let's get this going. Yes. Maybe I should direct it. Maybe that's the only way to do it. Exactly. Um, I have your stats here. Through your show, 64 Emmys. $130 million in gifts and donations, 1,600 musical guests, 2,400 different celebrities, and they even have a stat for how many times you've scared your guests. How Two, 200 times. That's not many when you think we do, <laughs> we've done 3,000 shows. 200 times out of 3,000 is not enough. 200 times is a lot, and one time was with me. Sure. Well, why do you do that? I know I ask you this every time. Because it's fun. <laughs> you know it's fun. It wasn't fun in the moment. But now it's fun. Those were real tears. But now it's fun. It's fun to think about. Yeah. Is that what you're going to miss the most? No, because I can still scare people. I still, <laughs> I still scare people when we're, at, you know, I do it when, and it, like, we're, we're like, we have people over at the house, and if somebody goes to the bathroom, I'm, I'm hiding, waiting for them to come out, and I, I do it all the time. Poor Portia. You're just going to, like, torture her no, the whole time. Get, I don't do it to her. I do it to other people. She, she doesn't get that scared. <laughs> well, maybe she's expecting it. No, she just, she's like me, where I, you can't scare me either. I don't get scared. <laughs> Next year, the day after your last show, you open your eyes. Where is Ellen DeGeneres going to be? I hope on an island someplace. I hope I'm floating in the water someplace. I don't know. I'm hoping to get on a plane. And, you know, right after I finish the show, I open my campus in Rwanda for the, you know, Diane Fossey Foundation. So... Um, we're going to go away, and then we have the opening for my campus, which will be amazing. And I'll, I'll be there kind of uh, pretty, pretty, you know, like a month after I finish. But, yeah, I hope, I, um, I hope I'm on an island. Well, I was going to do a lightning round, but I'm so bad at it. But I'll, I'll take, like, did you have a favorite guest? Um, it's too hard to say a favorite guest, but obviously I chose Pink and Oprah to be on this show because I love both of them. Um, so I have to say musical Pink and guest Oprah because she's the wise one. Um, and uh, next. Least favorite? Least favorite? Oh, um, <laughs> probably the people that you were mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> um, best music? Uh, best music. Well, I mean, Pink is fantastic. Yeah. I just have to stick with Pink. Yeah. Uh, best scare? Um, well, Eric Stone Street, we've gotten him a lot. But, but it, it actually has to be Andy. Poor Andy. What? Sarah Paulson. Oh, Sarah Paulson, yes. Uh, Diddy is pretty good. I think, yeah, Diddy, but Sarah Paulson, because we get her constantly. And she is, she's just, uh, she never disappoints. How do you decide which guests to scare? Um, <laughs> well, Diddy was tricky because he could have hurt somebody. He, he did almost punch somebody. <laughs> Because, you know, there are these rea reactions when you scare somebody, and some, some people are going to react that way. But he danced instead. Um, <laughs> I don't know. We just, we all, you know, sometimes they go, let's not do it. But they're always coming up with, let's scare somebody. And, and I'm usually the one that says, no, let's just do an interview. I always thought maybe you scared people you liked. Um, well, I do scare people I like. I wouldn't scare somebody I didn't like. Yeah. Okay. 
But that, but that doesn't mean if I didn't scare you, I don't like you. Because there are a lot of people I like that I didn't scare. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so confused. Yeah. Um, what are you most proud of? I'm most proud of um, going 19 years on this show. I mean, this is an, an accomplishment. I'm most proud of um, the people who have... Who, who work here, who have stuck by me and who have supported me and worked their asses off to make this show as great as it is. Um, I am the person who walks out here. I'm the face and the name of the show, but the show is, is made from all of these people who do all of their jobs, um, you know, tremendously. And especially this year with COVID, most people are working from home. We have a skeleton crew here. It makes it harder for everybody p to put a show together. So, um, you know, I'm I'm proud of, I just, I'm proud of everything. I'm proud of the kind of show we do. I'm proud that we are funny. I'm proud that we are um, that we are helpful to people, and that we represent um, acts of kindness and highlighting stories and people that we we want to say, look at this person doing good. Um, because we need to see more of those people. They just, and there are people that do it not even knowing they're going to get attention. And those are the kind of people I like to highlight because they're just going about their lives. They're not on TV. They don't have a platform or a light on them. And I want to say, here's someone doing it just out of the goodness of their heart. You know, it is an accomplishment because in this space, in daytime talk shows, a lot of times it is the salacious and the sizzly stuff. You never did a show like that. Mm-mm. No, and you know I, it's you know people would say why don't you do why'd you do daytime why don't you do nighttime and it's like I would do this exact show at night you know like you can you can record it during the day and you can watch it at night and act like it's a nighttime show but this is the exact show I would do if I had a late night show mm. I wouldn't change a thing not like a slinky dress or something oh yeah I'd wear a slinky dress I, I I'm sorry I didn't thought I wasn't talking about the clothing for sure. Next season, it's going to be all slinky dresses. Oh, great. Yeah. Like a, every day, a different negligee. Slinky dress 19. That's what we're going to call it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could brainstorm that together. Yeah, yeah. That's how I'm going to get the ratings. Yeah. It will. And then I'm going to come out as straight. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll be tuning in for yeah. that. Yep, that's a, that's a tease. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. Hilarious. Thank you. You're funny. Thank you. You should do this for a living. I'm going to end it in a year. Thank you. All right. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.